All right, so good morning. Good morning and welcome back. For those of you who do not know, my name is Jared Wesley Campbell. And as we continue in our Bible study, so this morning, we're going to be in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, starting in verse 10, and we'll read to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, and we'll end at verse 4. I'm going to create some playlists on YouTube for these Bible studies as well. Without further ado, before we get into our reading, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10, through 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 4, we'll start out by asking the Lord a quick prayer. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, we're going to ask him. And we're going to ask the Lord to shine into our hearts, O loving Master, the pure light of your divine knowledge. And open up the eyes of our mind, and that we may understand your teachings in the scripture. Help us to apply what we learn so that we're having conquered simple desires, that we may pursue the spiritual way of life, thinking and doing all the things that are pleasing to you. Your Christ, your God, your life, and to you give glory, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, now and forever, the sages. Amen. The Lord is our shepherd. All right, good morning. Welcome back. So great is his faithfulness. Indeed, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Keep asking, keep seeking, keep knocking. Christ is truly in our midst. The true definition of minister is to serve someone else's will. It's my pleasure to bring you all God's word each and every day. So as we continue, let's share the screen over, get right to our reading. Thank you all again for following. All right, so 1 Corinthians chapter 2, starting in verse 10. All right, so we'll get zoomed in. All right. So 1 Corinthians chapter 2, starting in verse 10. Let's get zoomed in really well so you can see it. Name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And it says, But God has revealed them to us through his Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of man except the Spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man does not receive the things of the spirit of God, for they are, for they are foolish to him, nor can he know them. Because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual ju judges all things. Yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. First Corinthians chapter 3. And I, brethren, cannot speak to you as to spiritual people, but as to carnal, as to babes in Christ. I fed you with milk and not with solid food. For until now, you are not able to receive it. And even now, you are still not able. For you are still carnal. For where there are envy, strife, and divisions among you, you are not carnal and behaving like mere men. For when one says, I am a Paul, and another, I am a Apollos, are you not carnal? Name the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Beautiful. Beautiful. So, so first Corinthians chapter two, starting in verse 10, there's no break until first Corinthians chapter three, verse four. So I kind of did it this way. And so what, what's happening is that when we come to know God's wisdom through the Holy spirit, right? For the Holy spirit knows the things of God. Look at verse 11. For what man knows the things of man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. So when we're coming to know God's wisdom through the Holy Spirit, for only the Holy Spirit knows the things of God. Just as the spirit of the man knows what is in man. Note Paul's threefold class classification of humanity. One, the natural man is soulish, right? Look at verse 14. But the natural man does not receive the things of the spirit of God, for they are foolish to him, nor can he know them because they spiritually discern. 
So the natural man is one not yet joined to Christ. He's un, he's unenlightened. For such people, divine things appear to be foolish because they, they, they inquire into divine things by human and natural reasoning rather than receiving these by faith. Number two, spiritual man. So the spiritual man, look at verse 15. But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. So the spiritual man is filled with the Holy Spirit, which is given at chrismation and is maturing in his knowledge, Christ. Look at number three. So let's look at number three, the carnal man, right? So the carnal. Talking about the flesh, right? Fleshy. Look at verse one here in chapter three. And it says, and I, brethren, cannot speak to you. And I, brethren, cannot speak to you as to spiritual people, but as to carnal, as to babes in Christ. So number three, the carnal man, fleshy, right? Is the person who, while in the church, has his mind set on earthly things, still trying to satisfy personal wants and selfish desires. We reveal our spiritual condition by our relationship with other Christians. The lesson is plain. Growth in our fellowship with God demands living in the overcoming strength of the Holy Spirit, who brings unity to the church and great victory over petty squabblings, right? So back in chapter 2, let's look at verses 12 through 15. And I'm going to read them again, starting in verse 12. It says, Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man does not receive these things of the spirit of God, for they are foolish to him. Nor can he know them because they are spir spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual judges all things that he himself is rightly judged by no one. So in verses, so right there in chapter 2, verses 12 through 15, it's talking about enlightenment from God, right? So enlightenment from God in itself is beyond all words and even beyond elevation by other men. Look at right there in verse 15. Right. But he who is spiritual judges all things that he himself is rightly judged by no one. Nevertheless, the Holy Spirit speaks through the spiritual people's words that truly reflect. That truly reflect the unspeakable, unspeakable knowledge of faith. This language of faith in turn leads lead spiritually minded people to know God better, although it baffles the natural man. Verse 14 but the natural man does not receive these things in the spirit of God, for they are foolish to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. In verse 16, it says, in chapter 2, it says, For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. So the mind of Christ. So the mind of Christ is enlightenment by the Holy Spirit. Look at verse 10, chapter 2. But God has revealed them to us through his Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. So the mind of Christ, what? So the mind of Christ is enlightenment by the Holy Spirit. Read verse 10. It brings those chrismated into communion with Christ and others of like mind in his body, the church. The mind of Christ then is not private, but is given to all. It is the mind of the church. Beautiful. Beautiful. And as we get ready to close out, right? So right there in chapter three. So the first the, the first four verses. Let's look at them again. And it says, And I, brethren, cannot speak to you as to spiritual people, but as to carnal, as to babes in Christ. I fed you with milk and not with solid food, for until now you are not able to receive it. And even now you are still not able, for you are still carnal. For where there are envy, strife, and divisions among you, you are, you, are you not carnal and behaving like mere men? For when one says, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, 
are you not carnal? So let's take a note of this, right? It's like almost taking a screenshot, those four verses. So note there that the gospel was first communicated. Hey, listen attentively. The gospel was first communicated through the spoken word of the apostles. Since God, since God inspires both oral, the apostolic preaching, and written, scriptural, right? Communication of his word. Oral and written tradition form a seamless whole, right? Let's go over that again. The gospel was first communicated through the spoken word of the apostles. Since God inspires both oral, the apostolic preaching, and written, scriptural, right? Communication of his word. Oral and written tradition form a seamless whole. Name the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Beautiful. 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 Those are where we're going to end. So, tomorrow, we're going to finish up chapter 3. Let's look at chapter 4. So, we'll finish up chapter 3. And it looks at chapter 4 here. We're going to stop probably around verse 10 or verse 11. So we'll do half of chapter 4. So we'll finish up chapter 3 and do half of chapter 4. Somewhere around verse 10 or verse 11. We'll do tomorrow. And this will complete our reading and study for this morning. Hope you enjoyed this. Thank you all again for following. All right. All right. Close out in prayer. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Oh, Lord God, you've spoken to us your divine sacred words. Illuminate the souls of sinners to comprehend what we just read. That we don't appear as simply as hearers of spiritual words, but doers of good deeds, true pursuers of faith. Having to blame his life in contact without reproaching Christ our Lord, your light, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, now and forever, sages. Amen. The Lord is our shepherd. Our Father, who art in heavens, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our trespasses. To forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Yours, the kingdom, power, glory, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, now and forever, sages. Amen. The Lord is our shepherd. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be merciful to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you, give you peace. And the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, now and forever, sages. Amen. The Lord is our shepherd. We depart in peace in the name of the Lord, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Peace be with you all, quite peace. Shalom, shalom. May the Lord forgive those who love us and those who hate us. Have a blessed day. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. I love you all so much.